billion dollar orders, decabillion dollar earnings, and half a trillion dollars in the order pipeline. Yes, we're talking about Nvidia. Here's what jumped out. 51.2 billion of your 57 billion revenue number came from the data center chip sales. That is just monstrous. I I'm so curious to know, what's the largest single order to date that you've gotten? Oh my gosh, I, I don't know. They're all in the billions. You know, they all have to be in the billions in order to add up to 51. And so, so um, I, I don't know exactly which one, but one of the things that, that is really great about NVIDIA's architecture is that we're so diversified. AI is not just one thing. It's not just one language model or one chatbot. AI is a system of models and you could use it for, of course, chatbots, but you could also use it for physics and biology and chemistry and of course, robotics and self-driving cars. and. And even within language models, there's so many different architectures. NVIDIA's architecture is the only one in the world that runs literally everything. And yesterday, we announced a big partnership with Anthropic, and now we're the only architecture in the world that runs every single premier AI model, as well as every single open source model, and of course, every single version modality of model. And so our versatility makes it possible for us to have a lot of different customers. And for all of those customers, we can bring them a lot of other customers that ultimately use their cloud capabilities. Yeah, it feels like all roads are leading to NVIDIA. How are orders for your next generation ship, the Rubin trending, and are you still on track to ship them at the end of 2026? Well, I announced at GTC that starting this year, because we started shipping Blackwells, over the course of this year through the end of next year, we have visibility of half a trillion dollars worth of Blackwell and Vera Rubin. And we'll start shipping Vera Rubin in Q3 timeframe of next year. The silicon is back. It is working wonderfully. People, engineers across NVIDIA are bringing up the system. It's doing it beautifully. And uh, we're on track to, for volume production in the Q3 timeframe of next year. In the meantime, uh, I announced that we have half a trillion dollars worth of visibility, but in the last 30 days, we announced some major new wins that were not included in that half a trillion dollars. So we have, we're adding, of course, the anthropic opportunity. We're ad adding uh, Elon's XAI now being uh, deployed in Saudi Arabia. We announced a partnership with Humane and that those GPUs have been licensed and they're gonna be deploying in in Saudi Arabia. And we also announced that AWS is going to also build 150,000 GPU AI infrastructure in Saudi Arabia. All of those are all net new. And so orders are still coming in. And so it's gonna be a pretty pretty busy year for us the next, uh, next year. It sounds like then the, the current quarter is going to be crazy good. Can, can I say that? What do you think? Well, we guided to a much larger quarter next quarter. And so next, the guidance that we provided is crazy good. I would agree with that. And, um, but you know, we're in the beginning of a very long-term build out of the fundamental infrastructure of humanity, which is computing. As you know, we reinvented computing for the first time in 60, 70 years. And so all of the computers that have been installed around the world is being modernized to accelerated computing, NVIDIA's GPUs, and to artificial intelligence. And so this build out is gonna last us many years to come. You know, it was exactly a year ago, and this is why I ask about Rubin orders, et cetera, because it was a year ago that you and I spoke about the problem a lot of companies wish they had. Blackwell orders were pouring in from the firehose so fast, demand outweighed supply. What specifically have you changed to prevent any bottlenecks when Rubin rolls off the Taiwan semi-assembly line? Well, you know, we're not gonna be caught flat-footed too many times. And we now have a much better understanding of the scale. Yeah and the breadth, the diversity of our customer base. We've done a really good job planning our supply chain. We now have the largest supply chain of any company in the world. We work with TSMC, of course, manufacturing in Taiwan, and then also very proudly for the first time here in the United States. We work with every single memory vendor now. We have three different sources, three gigantic sources of really complicated memory and every system maker in the world are partnering with us. And so we've been planning for the Vera Rubin launch and we've done a really good job getting set up for that. It's going to be a really big year next year.
Jensen reveals half a trillion dollars in Blackwell and Vera Rubin visibility through end of 2026, but in just the last 30 days added massive new wins not included in that number. Anthropic, XAI, AWS, and a large AWS deployment. Meanwhile, NVIDIA has also built the largest supply chain of any company in the world. This does feel like a once in a lifetime demand cycle that separates NVIDIA from every other semiconductor cycle in history. Half a trillion dollars in committed orders with 18 months of visibility is unprecedented. For context, NVIDIA's entire 2026 revenue was around $60 billion. But the staggering part is the massive backlog just keeps growing. In just 30 days, a single month, they added multiple billion dollar deals on top of that half a trillion. That doesn't seem like demand moderating or plateauing, it's demand accelerating even after customers have already committed hundreds of billions of dollars in aggregate spending. The Anthropic win is particularly significant because it makes NVIDIA the only architecture in the world that runs every single premier AI model. Anthropic was previously on custom silicon and alternative architectures. Getting them onto NVIDIA GPUs means Claw's entire inference and training infrastructure now runs on Blackwell and Rubin. That's potentially tens of billions in incremental revenue from a single customer migration. The XAI Saudi Arabia deployment through Humane shows how Elon's companies are driving massive infrastructure build out globally. The 500 megawatt data center they announced starts with a 60 megawatt phase. At typical GPU density, that's easily multiple billions in GPUs just for one XAI regional deployment. AWS committing to 150,000 GPUs in Saudi Arabia is another multi-billion dollar order with blackwell pricing estimates of 30 to 40k per gpu we're looking at around four to six billion dollars from a single regional aws build out that's just one geography for one cloud provider aws is building similar scale infrastructure in multiple regions globally for ai workloads these aren't customers pulling forward purchases or relocating existing orders if we take jensen's word for it this is genuinely incremental demand on top of the half a trillion already committed the backlog isn't just large, it's growing faster than NVIDIA can fulfill, which is why Jensen confidently says it's going to be a pretty busy year for us next year. And one of the most amazing things is the diversification of demand sources protecting against any single customer pullback. If one hyperscaler slows spending, sovereign AI investments from countries like Saudi Arabia, UAE and others pick up the slack. If cloud providers moderate, enterprise AI deployments through partners like Anthropic and XAI continue. There's a lot of different customers across different use cases and geographies creating resilience traditional semiconductor companies never had. The timing dynamics are also fascinating. Blackwell is shipping now through until the end of 2025. Rubin volume production starts Q3 2026, yet customers are already committing to both simultaneously plus whatever comes after. They're not waiting to see Blackwell performance before ordering Rubin, they're ordering multi-generation roadmaps because they know computational demand will exceed whatever capacity they build. This validates the three simultaneous scaling laws Jensen describes. If customers thought inference or post-training scaling would plateau, they wouldn't commit to multi-generation GPU purchases at this scale. The fact they're reordering aggressively for 2026 to 2027 means they're modeling exponential compute growth continuing for years, not quarters. But having massive demand without supply would repeat the Blackwell bottleneck disaster. Nvidia has built the largest supply chain of any company in the world to handle Vera Rubin demand, including TSMC manufacturing in both Taiwan and very proudly for the first time in the United States. The Blackwell supply constraints were Nvidia's biggest vulnerability. Demand was a fire hose overwhelming supply. Customers were frustrated, competitors saw an opening, he's not going to be caught flat footed too many times and acknowledges they learned the hard way that even the world's best chip design means nothing if you can't manufacture and deliver it at scale. Building the largest supply chain of any company in the world is an extraordinary claim that's probably literally true. Apple had the previous gold standard for supply chain scale and complexity. Nvidia has likely surpassed them because AI infrastructure supply chains are more complex than consumer electronics. GPUs, HBM, advanced packaging, cooling systems, network switches, and power delivery, the component count and technical sophistication exceeds even iPhone supply chains. 
And then we come on to NVIDIA's planning horizon. Jensen says, we've been planning for the Vera Rubin launch, which doesn't ship until Q3 2026. That's 18 months plus of advanced planning with suppliers. Competitors trying to catch NVIDIA can't just design better chips. They need supply chains that can deliver at similar scale with similar lead times. That takes years to build, even if you have the chip designs. It's pretty exciting to see Jensen so confident about next year, stating it's going to be a really big year. They've systematically addressed every bottleneck, fab capacity diversification, memory supply diversification, system maker partnerships, US manufacturing for geopolitical security. Ruben launches into a supply chain architecture specifically to handle unprecedented demand without constraints. This competitive implication is brutal for their competition, the likes of AMD, Intel, and custom silicon efforts. Even if they design competitive chips, they're years behind on supply chain build out. TSMC's cutting edge capacity is allocated to NVIDIA for years. HBM suppliers are committed to NVIDIA's volumes. System makers have invested in NVIDIA's integration expertise. Catching up requires not just chip design talent, but supply chain partnerships that take half a decade to establish at this scale. YouTube isn't just entertainment. It's one of the best client acquisition tools because it builds trust at scale. We've helped businesses grow from scratch to a $100,000 a month just by launching them a YouTube channel. Book a call with me below and let's see how YouTube could help your business scale.